hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high, most high, most high. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. <clears throat> you are great and greatly to be praised. Abba Father, you reign. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere. Your glory, O oh Lord, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Hallelujah. Overcome us with your presence, O oh Holy God. Overcome us with your presence, O oh Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome into this day, the Holy One you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in. We greet you in the mighty and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he who was and is and is to come, he who is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, he who is the bright and morning star, he who is our savior, our creator, our Lord, our God, and our King, who is like unto our God, who is like unto our God, no one, no one. There is no name like his name a name that is above every name, that at the sound of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, at the sound of Yeshua, the Amashiach of Nazareth, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who is like unto our God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, sweet, and wonderful name. Glory God, glory God, glory God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we pay homage to you this morning. We pay sweet, sweet praise, sweet praise unto your name. Lord, we do not pretend like we know how to honor you in every way, but we desire to learn. By your Holy Spirit, we desire to learn how to honor you, how to spend time with you, how to seriously meditate and hear from you how to read and understand and be ministered to by your word, how to obey, how to just walk in the fullness of your goodness. Lord, we desire not to play church or to have a fake relationship, but to walk in the fullness of your goodness with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And so, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask you this morning by your Holy Spirit, as we honor you, as we glorify you, as we say holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We ask you, O gracious, wonderful and awesome God, pour out your spirit upon us afresh, a spirit move that teaches us how to understand what we need to do and who we need to be by you in your will and in your purpose. Show us the way, O God. Teach us the way that we might learn that we might be trusted, entrusted, and accredited with the name that you gave to Abraham, a man of faith, a man of righteousness, holiness and truth, a man of obedience. Lord, let that be so upon each and every member of this family. Let your obedience, O God, by which you learned many things, the Bible says that you learned obedience through the things you suffered. And by your obedience, you gain the name that is above every name. You are glorified by your obedience. Father, may we too be glorified by our obedi obedience. Lord, you said what we see you do, we will do and even greater works. Lord, let obedience to your word, obedience to your will, obedience to your purpose and your process be our portion now and always in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We desire to walk holy and upright before you. We desire to honor you in every way, shape and form. Father, we often miss it. We often miss it. And we do not want to continue to miss it. But I ask you, O oh gracious, wonderful God, help us. Help us not to miss it anymore. Help us, O oh God. To bring glory to your name in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth yeah. hallelujah amen good morning good morning good morning early risers good morning to you faith-based 
children of the most high god good morning to those of you on instagram those of you on facebook those on tiktok pleasant good morning to those of you on youtube good morning good morning good morning may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord hallelujah cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord strengthen you may the lord give you the courage and, and the boldness and the strength to persevere through this day may no weapon form against you prosper may every tongue that rise against you in judgment be condemned today and always in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth may today be a day of refreshing a day of purifying a day of cleansing a day of peace a day of joy a day of love a day of victory for each and every one of us gathered here this morning may our works hallelujah bring glory to the name of the lord jesus christ may the hand of god that is not short be the righteous right hand that upholds us may the ears of god hear our cry our declare our decree our questions hallelujah may the heart of god receive the knocking that we have been knocking and open to us that we might step into his heart and live protected by the love hallelujah the grace and the mercy that is in his heart and may everything that we ask hallelujah be answered as it was with daniel the moment he asked is the moment the answer came or the answer was released may that be our portion in this season lord may the answers that you sent for daniel may the answers that you sent for joseph hallelujah be our answers may the answers that you sent for the lord jesus christ when he walked on the earth as man and after he was glorified may the answers that you sent for the disciples the apostles hallelujah for stephen for philip may those same answers O god almighty may the same way or the same method or the same process be our portion that as we call upon you you hear and answer in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth so let it be O god that we can know that this is truly hallelujah the same god that we serve and that same god is on the same throne and that same throne is the empowered throne of the most high god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth have thine own way have thine own way have thine own way in jesus mighty name same god same god same god same god same god hallelujah hallelujah and so as i say good morning to each and every one of you i want to just uh for a, for a couple of minutes today is deliverance thursday and deliverance uh, uh doesn't just mean out in the name of jesus christ deliverance is also deliverance from a mindset deliverance from a burden deliverance from a way of how you're feeling just to release it uh deliverance is trans being transformed from the place of fear and uh caution and uh unbelief to the place of belief and comfort and peace and so it's very important for us as a family in our intimate space to be uh honest and open and forthright with the things that concern us with the things that uh could easily if if stay hidden in our hearts uh become a foul spirit that affects how we operate affects our faith affects our hope affects our desires affects our our, our stick to itiveness our pursuit to overtake and recover all and so this morning for a couple of minutes i want to talk to you about the the, the art of being delivered from that which we hide behind our christianity the art of deliverance from which we hide behind our christianity the things we hide behind our christian arguments our christian belief system our christian expectations we hide uh, the, the 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 pain of not getting the answers that we are looking for we hide the pain of our disappointments from things that we have prayed about and have not seen the answers to and this morning i want to be the source through which god delivers us all of us including myself because i've been disappointed uh, so many times and i continue to press i continue to believe god but i can tell you i can tell you without let me let me start with me 
I am not at the place of my absolute purpose. I am not. I can tell you this is not me just trying to be humble or trying to be um, uh, normal or regular or any of those things. I am telling you the absolute truth, which you guys must be become accustomed to hearing. I am not at the mark, at the level that I'm supposed to be at because I have had so many disappointing uh what should I say? So many disappointing revelations in my own life. So many disappointments that I, I, I know God is able to, 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 to do, to fix, to change, to, to reverse that I have not seen. And, um, and, and, and one of them is something that happened to me many, 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 many years ago. Um, it was unfortunate. It was unfair. It was not my doing, but I got blamed for it. And uh, 30 odd years later, I am still suffering from that evil. I'm still suffering from the lies that were told on me. And, um, and, and, and I, you know, I just, I figured that God would have dealt with it, that God, even in this season, would have, um, would have, would have reversed that curse. And it would seem as if, because I am convinced that God is not evil, that something is missing from my faith. Good morning, good morning, those who are just coming in, Sister Quinda. Um, we, we, we're talking um, this morning for a few minutes about deliverance from things that are hiding behind our Christianity. Our Christian face puts on a face. When I, when I get up in the morning, I put on a face that I... I, I I'm believing God, that God is able to do everything. And I know this. I, I am convinced that God is able to do everything, that God is able to, to cause the dry bones in a valley to live. He parted the Red Sea. He parted the Jordan River. He tore down the Jericho Wall. He did. He defeated many, many armies that came against Israel, uh, the most magnificent of which is the army of, of 30,000 that came against the 300 that Gideon led. And, um, and the stories go on. He caused four lepers' footsteps to sound like a mighty army and caused the mighty Assyrian army that had laid siege to Jerusalem to have to run, 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 run and never stop running and left all of their belongings and their wealth and their food. And so I've seen enough evidence to know that there is nothing that is impossible for God. And so when you know, your Christianity knows your Christian belief system knows, your Christian hope and dream knows that God is able to do everything and anything and whatever he so desires. But yet still, that which is seriously affecting you, that which you desire to see come to pass, that which you really would be so grateful for and would become probably your best testimony, you are still, you're still, you're still waiting and hoping and you have to put on a good face you have to keep saying god is good god is awesome but in the depths of your heart behind your christianity you are still struggling you're still saying god where are you god is it me is it that uh, i i something is wrong with me uh, because i see what you're doing for other people i see how lupus gets healed miraculously overnight i see a leg grow out right in front of my eyes i know beyond the shadow of a doubt it is not just what i see in the bible i see people get delivered from monsters that speaks through them i see people get healed from sickness that 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 came immediately to kill them and you reverse that curse and gave them back life i have seen it i have seen it i have seen it and so i'm not it's not a figment of my imagination my belief in you and who you are but how come god how come how come how come I'm still struggling with hypertension? How come on, on, on a regular basis, Satan seemed to just have unfettered access to, 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 to torture me and make me feel like I'm going to die? How come these lies that were told against me that has, has, has put a damper on my ability to cross the Jordan and go into the promised land? How come that is still there on the records when it shouldn't be? How come, God? How come? And, and, and I'm speaking uh, on behalf of, of, of many of us who, it, it may not be big things, but just simple things. Things like, how come, God, my age is almost off the calendar and I'm not married yet? 
I had made a vow that as I walk with you that by 25 I would be married and, and by 29 I would have what, my two children and have my job and my comfortable place to live and have my family and, 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 and I haven't even met the man yet and I'm nearly 30 or I'm past 30. How come God? Where is that situation? Where is that, that that house that I Lord I'm still struggling with with public transportation and you promised me a car years ago, well past twenty one days. Father, you came through for Daniel in twenty one days and I have been struggling, struggling, struggling. Lord, our family is not is not financially secure. We're not we're not asking for wealth and overflow and excess. We're just asking for a level of comfort that we can put food on the table, uh, to take care of the children. We want the children to be able to see and know that the God we talk about, the God we say is a good God, that that God is coming through for us in every situation and circumstance. Uh, God, where, 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 where are you? What is going on in my own life that is causing me, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, to not see the blessings that you say is ours? You said we are blessed and highly favored. You said we are the head and not the tail. You said we are above and not beneath. You said we were born to, to walk in victory. You said that we have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yet when we look around, the power of the enemy seemed to be overtaking us, seemed to be destroying everything except our belief system. And even some of us, O oh God Almighty, are struggling with our belief system because the enemy just seems to always be winning. Where are you, Lord? Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Elisha? Where is the God of Daniel? Where is the God of Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego? Where is the God of Paul and Peter and James and John and Philip and Stephen? In these end times, when the times are so difficult, when it's coming closer and closer to the end times, shouldn't you be showing up even more, God? Shouldn't you be demonstrating your glory even more in our lives that our testimonies will draw men unto you and win souls? Why does it seem like you have gone away why does it seem like you have forsaken us why does it seem God that we are so evil that you will only preserve us but you will do nothing to help us why does it seem these ways but God we hide them behind our Christianity and we continue to worship we continue to honor we continue to read the word we continue to declare that it is well with our souls but it is not well because we are not well on the inside our Christianity is on the outside, but our hurt and our pain and our disappointments are on the inside. This morning, God, we come humbly before you. We come, O oh God, and we say, Lord, deliver us from this pain that is hiding behind our Christianity. Deliver us, O oh God, from the disappointments that are hiding behind our Christianity. God, we say the right things and we and we and we sometimes do the right things because we know that you are good. We know that you are God. We have seen it, even if it's only in the lives of others. But what about us, God? What about us? What about us? Lord, yesterday I heard a story of a little girl, I think she's about five or six years old in in um in Syria, in Turkey that was found under great under tremendous amounts of rubble. Uh, just by a miracle of God, she's under all these fallen stones and, 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 and pieces of building and she was found and taken out and when they found her and they said, oh my goodness, how did she survive for so many days? I think it's three or five days. She survived under those stones and she had no access to anything at all. And as a baby, as a child, she would have been susceptible to all the ills and the, and the, the situations and the fears. And when they asked her what happened, she said, I, 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 I am strong, I survived because a man in a shiny white suit, in a white suit, a bearded man in a white suit came and fed me every day and, and, and no one could understand, no one could, could understand what's happening and so they took her to the doctor to check her out and the doctor says her body was fully nourished. I don't know if you've heard this story. It, it's, it, it's carried all over Turkey and it, it has become world news. This little girl was fed by Jesus. I don't know if it's Jesus himself or an angel, but she was fed from heaven. Let me say it that way. She was fed from heaven. She was fed from heaven by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because whether it was Jesus literally that fed her or he sent an angel, it's still by his love and his demand and command how she was fed. And the doctors were amazed 
amazed and so now the name of jesus christ of nazareth is is, is on everybody's lips in Turkey. They now know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. As Nebuchadnezzar found out when he saw what happened with Daniel in the lion's den. As Nebuchadnezzar found out when he saw what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that a fourth man was in the fire covering them, guarding and keeping them. So we have now found out, hallelujah, and the Turkish people have found out uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, it wasn't Buddha, it wasn't Krishna, it wasn't Allah, it wasn't any of those other uh, gods that are created by man. It was Jesus Christ, the glorified one, the one who came, suffered, bled, and died for our sins, the one whose name is hated in almost every quarter, in even some churches. They try to eliminate his name, but it is his name will put Satan and his works to shame. It is his name that has taken the blame. It is his name that will change the game. And so the people in Turkey now know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is real. They know that he's alive. But do you know? Do you know? Are we still living vicariously through other people's experience and testimonies? Or, or are we living, hallelujah, through our own testimonies? I love the testimonies of others, especially when I am involved in seeing that testimony come to pass. But am I living my own testimonies? Are you living your own testimonies? Do you need deliverance from the from the from the sadness of failings, from the disappointments that are hiding behind your Christian wall, hiding behind the Jericho wall of your Christianity? Do you need deliverance from disappointments, from feeling of rejection, from feeling that God loves everybody else and don't love you the same way? Are you feeling that pain? that you put on makeup and mask, the makeup of Christianity, the makeup of the word, the makeup of hallelujah, the makeup of praise God, the makeup of God is good, God is good, God is good to me, how could I let him down? Because we have to be real. We have to be real and tell God how we feel. I often feel disappointed. I often feel like God, I, I, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. You use me on a regular basis and I'm grateful for that. I'm not complaining about that. I, 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 I don't even want to mention that. I am grateful that the, one of the ways that God lets me know he's real and he's alive is how he uses me to be a blessing to others. I pray and God deliver. He heals, he sets free, he makes whole. But like two days ago, when I felt like I was dying, I got up off my couch and the attack on my body, the attack on my life was so great. I staggered. My eyes were wobbly. My stomach was upset. I felt nauseous. I felt like I was going to fall and I was home alone. Or my daughter was, was, was in her room and she was sleeping. She wasn't feeling well either. And I felt like I was on my last parados, like the death angel had come for me and said, I'm not leaving without you. I am not leaving without you. They came for me when I, I took my blood pressure. It was really high. And I was at that place and I laid hands upon my head and I believed God and I prayed. I believed God and I prayed. I believed God and I prayed. And when I took my pressure again, it was higher. It was higher. Are you hearing me, somebody? These are the things that we need deliverance from. We need deliverance from our expectations that sometimes turn out to be so disappointing that we hide it under the depths of our Christianity. But it is eating out at our inside like a cancer. It affects our prayer life because we don't pray for ourselves with the same faith and confidence like we pray for others. Because we are getting to a place where we believe that yeah, God will use me as a vessel. And we even find the scriptures where it says, there's some vessels for honor and some for dishonor. Come on. John the Baptist was a vessel of honor and a vessel of dishonor. A vessel of dishonor because of the task that he was given to do and how he was given um, allowed to live. John was a prophet that prophesied the coming of the Lord. 
He was a prophet that if he was prophesying in today's day, he would be rich. He would have lots of things. He won many souls for the kingdom, but he had nothing. He had animal skin tied around his body with, 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 with um, what you call it, banana, banana leaf, banana stalk as his belt. He ate wild honey and locusts. Yet he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yet he had many followers. So he lived almost in squalor. But he was at peace that Jesus Christ is his Lord. But even in John, there was a, a hint of sadness, a hint of disappointment. And we see that uh, further on in the story as the transition was about to be made or was being made from, from, from John and John's ministry and teaching to transition to Jesus when John was arrested and was about to lose his head. In other words, his time was up and he was about to go. There was a disappointment that came upon him that he needed deliverance from. And that disappointment caused him to send two of his disciples to Jesus and ask, are you the one? Are you the one? Or is there one still to come? This is the same John that from his Christianity, come on. And I'm using that because it wasn't Christianity with John because he was not a follower of Christ at the time. So don't get technical on me and start to beat me up saying, but John was not Christian um, pastor because he wasn't a follower of Christ or anything like that. And that came afterwards. No, man, don't miss, don't miss it. Don't get distracted by that. That's not not important he was the follower of God's way and God's will so keep focus on the point that I'm trying to make that we all need deliverance a man of John John's statue Jesus said of men born of a woman there a woman there is none greater than John but for those that are in heaven he is the least come on and so John, when he was in prison and he saw that he was being persecuted, he saw that he was about to be crucified or, or, or be beheaded, killed because he didn't know how he was going to die. But he knew that he was, uh, this was it. This was the end for him. Those prison gates were not going to open to let him out again to go minister. His days of ministry was over and he was saying, what have I done? Where? What, how could... How could the God that I ushered in, how could the God that I preached about, how could the God that, that uh, I said I was not worthy to unlatch his sandals, how could that God forsake me? How could that God not deliver me from this prison? How could that God allow my enemy to destroy me? How could that God not, 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 not give me confidence to go? How could that God not come true for me after I have worked so hard? It is easy to become depressed, demoralized. It is easy to be crying on the inside, but our Christianity looks good on the outside. So John sent the message to, the, to, to Jesus to say, is it you? This is the same John that says, here comes the Lamb of God in whom there is no sin. He's the one that says, I am not worthy to unlatch the, the, your sandals. He's the one that says, you should be baptizing me, not me, you. He's the one that identified Jesus to the world. And yet still, when the trouble took him, when the hopelessness was in his face, he was going back on all that he believed and declared before and say, are you really the one? Are you really the one or is there one to come? Because he had expectations that the one to come, that the Jesus that he introduced, the Jesus that he heard the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear he, him. The one that he heard and experienced all of that from. The one that he knew went into the wilderness to be tempted for the 40 days. When it came down to his own personal pain and distress and seeming abandonment, he asked the question, are you the one or is there one to come? I'm saying to you, if John the Baptist can fall victim to that pain, to that unfulfilled desire, 
so can we but we have to be honest we have to be honest and we have to say god i will not stop worshiping you i will not stop honoring you i will not stop believing in you but there is a pain inside of me that i need delivered from there is a concern inside of me that i need delivered from I am wondering why is it that, 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 that I pray and other people get delivered or I see other people get delivered, set free and made whole, but I'm still carrying this burden. You said that your burden is light and your yoke is easy. And I see that happening for others, but it's not happening for me. I see all the things that I have to do, but I, 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 I am not getting that benefit. I'm not getting that, Lord, every day, every night, I have to be fighting demons in my dream. When I hear other people said, once they get up and say whoop 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 that's it they're good to go how come some people get delivered so easy and yet still i am battling with these demonic forces how come some people see luke 10 19 coming to pass in their lives and i am not god what is happening what have i done wrong search me oh god search me oh god search me oh god because i want to live free I want to not just be a Christian on my outside, but a Christian on my inside. I want the spirit of depression and rejection and hurt and pain that comes from not seeing your hand manifest in my life. I want to be delivered from that. I want to be delivered, Lord, that I may truly face the difficulties of life with a level of comfort and joy and peace on my inside. Because the difficulties of life will only get more intense as it comes closer to the coming of Christ. But if that difficulty starts on our inside and we're only a Christian on the outside, then we're only half Christian. The full Christian is a Christian from the inside out. One who says, I don't care if I have to die now. The peace that is on my inside, I request that you crucify me upside down. The peace that is on our inside should have us say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do as they stone us like Stephen. That's the peace that we need on our inside. But that peace comes from the victories that we experience ourselves on our inside the healing that we experience the deliverance that we experience the transformation that we experience that is not just vicariously through other people but for ourselves as well is there anyone here this morning that deep on your inside you're disappointed with some things that God has not done it doesn't matter if it's natural things or flavorous things or um or if it's spiritual things, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it is a, a child or children or family members that you have been beseeching God to save and you haven't seen any movement in that direction yet. And sometimes you get fearful, you get discouraged. You're saying, God, why have you not saved these people? Why have you not turned their hearts? Why have you not touched them? And you have become disappointed and it's getting harder to pray because it's almost like you're wasting your time. Is there something in your life this morning that it seems like you're wasting your time praying about because God is just not paying you any attention? God doesn't seem to care about that. Is there something? I am telling you just two things. There are many other things for me but just the two main things one that is over 30 odd years old and one that is pretty close to that too i've been taking blood pressure medication for as long as i can remember i don't remember not taking blood pressure medication and yet still in these periods of times when everyone else that i know my brother takes blood pressure medication as well my mother takes blood pressure medication as well and you know what their pressure is normal and is responding to the medication perfectly. Their pressure is balanced and is, 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 is thing. My mother can eat anything. She drinks soda. She's way older than me, obviously, because she's my mother. 
but my mother drinks soda my mother eat curried goat my mother eat anything at all and she's good to go and her pressure is stabilized by the medication i only need to smell something just smell something i just need to smell something that is bad for my pressure and before it goes into my mouth i love bun and cheese but if i eat a piece of cheese shoo, my pressure is gone i love saltfish pastor marsha will tell you i'm a saltfish tetis cook up saltfish akian saltfish saltfish in kalalo saltfish in 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 pop choy salt any way you give me saltfish i'm good to go i'm good to go but as i smell it as it as pete Peace touches my mouth, boom, my pressure is gone. And yet my mother, I'm on medication, just like my mother, just like my brother. Sometimes I talk to them and when I hear the things that they are able to eat and enjoy, and I have to look past it, I have to hear Pastor Marsha's voice in my head or in my ears say, no, you can't eat that, no, you can't eat that. And I want to tell her about our mother, but I love Beatrice Beckford dearly, so I can't tell her about our mother. <laughs> Uh, she, she's trying to protect me but why should she be the one trying to protect me when I know God or think I do can we be real this morning because deliverance is not just about out in the name of Jesus Christ deliverance is deliverance from a mindset deliverance is deliverance from things that we hide on our inside because we want to say we're good Christians and we are full of faith and we stand believing that God is able God is able and he is we're not denying that we're not denying that but there are times I'm telling you when tears comes from my inside it doesn't flow from my outside because my good Christian belief and confidence will not allow tears to come from things that disappoint me will not allow tears to come from things that I desire but I'm not seeing tears will not come on my outside for that because I'm a good Christian boy but it flows on my inside when I feel like I'm, I, I'm taking the medication but my pressure keeps going up instead of down I take the medication and it seems like I'm wasting my time I'm, I'm, I'm putting things in my body that man has made when God has made things his word God has given his blood God has given his flesh that is supposed to be a better medication that is supposed to heal me that is supposed to deliver me that is supposed to restore me and I'm not seeing it where do I put that disappointment where does that disappointment go people of God where does it go for you is there anything that is in your heart that is a disappointment anything that you have not seen come to pass some of you are married and your spouse has been sick or your spouse has not been behaving right you're married and you got saved and your spouse is not yet saved and you're praying and saying God I need me and my spouse to be in you and to be working for you and to be doing what needs to be done but you're not seeing it you're not seeing it you're not seeing it and you're saying God what is happening I'm so disappointed we should be praying together as a family he should be praying for me I should be praying for him and 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 whatever and you're not seeing it and you're wondering God what else am I to do what am I not doing, God? Why do I seem to be missing you? Is there anyone this morning that is asking God for something and you've been asking for a long time, but you're not seeing it, but you're still a good Christian. You're still on the outside. Look to people like all is well, but inside you're living in hell. Inside you're living in hell. You know you cannot backslide because this world has nothing to offer. This world is crazy. This world is crazy. And I'm not prophesying. I'm telling you what I'm seeing. People are doing things and saying things that are completely insane. It makes no sense. People with, 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 with brains, with brilliance, with knowledge, with wisdom, with understanding are taking a male man, a man that stands before them and has the, the, all the attributes of a man. All the attributes, all the organs of a man. But because the man says to them, I am a woman, they put that man in a cell, in a prison with women. And though he is sexually abusing them and getting some of them pregnant, they still, with so-called sensible minds, 
allow him to stay in there because he says he's a woman. How does that make sense? I'm telling you, this world has gone completely crazy. Completely crazy. There was a time, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, when if a man stood up and said, I am a woman, he would go to the, 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 the madhouse. They would put some a, a kind of um, back way cloak on him and, 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 and buckle it from the back and put him in, in, um, in, in, in the penitentiary. He would be in a, in a padded room and given medication. Now it seems like it is the, is, is, the, is the members of parliament, the prime ministers and presidents, the leaders that needs to be put in a, in a, in a, in a um, containment suit and put in a padded room because they're absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy that you could allow and, and, and facilitate these kinds of things. And so people on the inside are hurting. People on the inside are hurting and need deliverance. Children are being raped on buses now, going to school. People are not safe because of all of these changes and rules and regulations that are coming in that are designed to destroy the society. And, 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 they, and we think that uh, this is, and we're wondering, where is God? And so sometimes it is not just our own situations and circumstances, but it is, it is, it is what we see in our environment, what we see in our society. Straight jacket. Thank you, Sister Melody. <laughs> Straight jacket. There's so many of our judges our members of parliament, our senators, our governors, our mayors that need to be in a straight jacket because they are absolutely insane. I am saying this with no malice. I'm not saying this because I'm cursing. I'm not cursing our leaders. I could never do that. But I'm saying to you that some of them and the decisions that they're making are completely insane. Completely insane. Listen, it is easy. If a man says he identifies as a woman, yeah, that's his thing. That's his thing. You can't change that. That's his mind. If you, if you, if, you, but do not allow him by his decision, by his mindset, to damage other people. You cannot allow the freedom of one man to be the destruction of others. That makes no sense. That's a straight, 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 a straight, straight jacket decision judges lawyers advocates that is crazy it's a straight jacky thing you cannot allow the freedom of one to destroy the freedom of another that makes no sense it makes no sense come on and if you think that makes sense, you should be in a straight jacket and in a padded room somewhere locked away in the dark trying to find yourself. I cannot follow, I cannot listen to, I cannot admire someone who is a leader or someone who says they are brilliant, they have PhD or PR or MA or MS or first degree or whatever and, 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 and does things so foolish. We need deliverance from the pains that are inside of us because we see these things and we're saying, God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you when these children are being raped? Where are you when these children are dying? Where are you when these young women are being kidnapped and their organs being sold? Where are you when these people are injecting false things into the bodies of people? And 29 and 39 and, and, and 35 year olds are just falling dead from mysterious sick illnesses, falling dead from heart attack. All of a sudden, our society is just falling dead. Young people, young men, young women are just dropping down all over and no one is talking about it. It's a secret. I'm telling you, I'm talking to a friend of mine yesterday and she's, she, she, she's, she's almost in a panic. She's like, no, I have to do something different with my life because so many young people I know, none of them older than 40, are just out of the blue. They were healthy before going about their business and they're just falling dead from heart attack. And they all have one thing in common. There is one common denominator for all of them. 
And y'all know what that is. Y'all know what that is. But we have to pray. We have to pray. Because the only ones that will survive this onslaught to reduce the world's population are those who pray. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for your bloodline. Pray that the thing which is in our systems to contaminate us will not destroy us. I'm saying it again. We need deliverance from everything that has easily beset us. Everything that has been injected into our system through syringes and through demonic syringes and through our food and through all the, 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 the things that have happened to us that we should not have had to experience. Our bodies are contaminated. Stress is leading to heart attack. Medications are leading to death. Disappointments are leading to death. Heart failure in the spirit as we experience heart failure in the natural. We have to pray, Father, help our hearts. Heal our hearts. Cleanse our bloodstream in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we might survive, that we might live, that we might be encouraged to continue to encourage others. Some of us are so deeply rooted in the external of our Christianity that we're afraid to say, Father, my inside is disappointed. I am disappointed on my inside. But I'm saying to you, God already knows God knows that we're disappointed on the inside. God knows that I'm asking the question, Father, why? Why am I not healed from hypertension? Why is my situation after 30 odd years not resolved? Why, Lord? What do I need to do? Tell me if I'm missing it. You want to see me happy. You want to see your joy be my strength. And so I'm asking this morning for deliverance. Deliverance from that which is inside of me. Deliverance from that which is inside of you. That was a disappointment for so long that it has now become standard. It has now become a part of your existence and a part of mine. We have to ask, why, Lord? Why, Lord? Answer us today, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Answer us. Why are we still carrying this pain? Why am I carrying the pain of being single? Why am I carrying the pain of being broke? Why am I carrying the pain of, of children that are a disappointment? Why am I carrying the pain of a broken marriage that, 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 that I can't seem to get out of my head? Why am I carrying the pain of, 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 of a generation, a generational curse that don't seem to be able to go away from my family of abuse or of poverty or lack or insufficiency or rejection or, or, or abandonment? Why am I still carrying that pain? pain oh god that seems to be unique to me and you are you are, you are not touching it why is it something i'm doing is it something i'm not doing tell me lord you are the god of all answers i hear people say it all the time i pray and god answer me i talk to god and i hear god answer i pray with a, a, a man of god every monday morning and tuesday morning after devotion and when he talks about how God speaks to him clear, sometimes I'm jealous. It's just that I've been doing it for so many years now, talking to him and praying with him, that I'm, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. But I'm telling you, sometimes I get jealous. I'm saying, God, if it's even to hear you say, Rowan, you are, you are carrying this blood pressure as a cross. You're carrying this blood pressure as a cross. Bear it. Okay, Father. Good to go. Good to go. I will take the medication. I will. But what about if? What about if it is something that you need to do differently? What about if it's something that you need to change in your diet? What about if it's something that you need to change about how you think? What about if it's something that you need to change about what you do each day? How will you know this if you don't get instructions from God? The Bible says in all our ways we are to acknowledge Him and He will direct our path. And so when we are acknowledging him and we're not sensing and we're not getting and we're not understanding and we're not hearing and we're not knowing the path he wants us to take, 
that leads to depression, demoralization, distress, feeling of rejection that is on the inside. And so there is a reality that we know that God is good. There's a reality that we know God is real. There's a reality that we know that there is nothing outside of God for us. Nothing will benefit us outside of God. But we're still struggling inside of God with the things that we are not experiencing. And we have to be honest. We have to put it out there and say, God, God, what is it? Speak, Lord. Please do whatever it takes. We see in the Bible where when Samuel, as a young boy, didn't understand your voice, you didn't give up on him. You didn't just leave him to his way. You made sure, you made sure that he was able to hear your voice. When Mary, when you went to Mary to tell her about the baby and she was uh, back and forth, you stuck with her by the angel to make sure that she got it and fulfill your purpose. When Elizabeth, hallelujah, when Hannah, come on, and the list goes on and on and on. When you wanted, hallelujah, when Elijah, Elijah was sent to Elisha to bring him in and Elisha was asking questions and, and wanted to go do whatever and Elijah was going to give up on him, you persevered and made sure that there was a future for Elisha. All we're saying, God Almighty, all we're saying this morning is that you deliver us from that which has held us back, held us captive. Send your word to deliver us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Too many of us are carrying rejection on our inside though we are delivered on our outside our christianity is plain for others to see but on the inside we need deliverance our inside must begin to look like how our outside sounds and looks we need you this morning lord we need you this morning. We need you today. We need you on this Deliverance Thursday to deliver us from what easily beset us. Deliver us from disappointments. Deliver us from failure. Deliver us, O oh God Almighty, from rejection. Deliver us from feeling like we are the, 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 the target of the enemy and we can't seem to get out of his, his crosshairs. It's almost like we're a bullseye target at a firing range, always being hit, always being hit, always being hit, always being hit. We never get to do the shooting. We're always the one taking the bullets, taking the arrows, taking the darts. We're always the one. We need you this morning, Lord. We need you to deliver us. Deliver our organs. Deliver our hearts. Deliver our minds. Deliver our bodies. Deliver our souls. We need you, Lord. We need you. Deliver us, O oh God. Deliver us. We have no other source. Satan will never deliver us. He wants to destroy us more. If not for you, Lord Jesus, then who? If not by your hand, then by whose hand? Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we humble ourselves before you this morning. Deliver us from pride. Deliver us from lust, from greed. Deliver us from slothfulness. Deliver us, O oh God, from fear, from doubt, from unbelief. Deliver us from anything, O oh God, that cannot, that, that will not allow us to come into the holies of holies and to be a part of what you are doing in this season. Deliver us, O oh God. Father, we lay them before you. Come on, people of God. Begin to lay the things before God one more time. You, I know you have laid them before God before. You have laid your singleness. You have laid your financial situation. You have laid the situation with your mother's health, your father's health, your own health. Uh, you have laid the situation with the arthritis and the rheumatoid arthritis. You have laid the situation with the demonic dreams and, this, and the, the, the sexual encounters in your dreams. And, and these demons that constant. You've laid the situations with witchcraft in your bloodline. You've laid them before God over and over. And people have prayed with you. And mighty men of God and women of God have prayed with you. And you have not seen it. But we're laying them before Jesus this morning again. And we're saying, God. Oh, God. Where are you, Lord? Where are you in our situation? We don't want to be like John, who believed, yet had unbelief deep in his heart. 
We don't want to be like that man who, when he asks for help, and you said, do you believe I can help? And he says, yes, Lord, I believe, but help though my unbelief. Oh God, our hurt, our pain, our disappointments are weighing us down. We can't run as fast as we need to run. We're weary. Our lives are weary. But because we are running, people don't see and know that we are weary. We're not running half as fast as we should be running. We're walking, but in the midst of our walking, we're still fainting. Our lives are going against your word. And we need you this morning, Lord. We need you this morning. We need you, Lord. And so as a family, O oh God Almighty, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube, as a family this morning, we're saying, God, we lay ourselves bare before you. And we say, perform surgery. Perform surgery on our organs. Perform surgery on our soul. Perform surgery on our bodies. Perform surgery on our spirit. Renew, repair, restore unto us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Make haste to deliver us, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because that's the only reason we live that you will deliver us from what easily beset us make haste O God to deliver us that we might be healed that we might be delivered that we might be whole we need you Lord we need you more than ever we need you more than ever we have the information right here but the manifestation is not coming forth from our souls because we need you on the inside we need your help lord jesus not tomorrow not next week not 21 days from now not 40 days from now we need you now lord jesus we need you now there are people on the pulpits preaching the gospel of jesus christ winning souls for your kingdom but are broken on the inside are distressed are hanging on by a thread only by your grace that's not right Lord teach us how to help each other teach us how to help each other teach us how to deliver each other teach us how to be a sounding, a sounding board and not a judgmental instrument teach us oh God how to hear what you are saying in this season. That we might get rid of this feeling that is just like treason. Work on our insides, O oh God. Deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we just lift up all of the children at Macintosh Memorial Primary as they're about to take their midterm exams. I pray, O oh God, that they will not experience on their inside the disappointments that some of us as adults have experienced on our inside. We lift up Macintosh Memorial Primary School this morning and all the other primary schools that have midterm exams across Jamaica, across the Caribbean, across the world all the children that are having exams we pray for them this morning and we pray that you will strengthen them that you will encourage them that you will be their excellence their mind will represent the mind of christ in the name of the lord jesus christ and lord we also pray for the children and the adults and the nation of turkey and syria we continue to lift them up, Father, as the, 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 the carnage, the destruction continues to, to take center stage. So many have died. So many died without knowing you as Lord and Savior. So many needed to hear about you. So many needed to have come to that place of acceptance of you. And they didn't. And now it's too late for there is no repentance from the grave. Father, we ask that Turkey and Syria will not have to go through anything like this again to realize that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. 
I ask you, Lord, not to let America, England, Canada, Australia, and all the other continents of the world, Brazil, Africa, Middle East, all these places, O oh God Almighty, let them not have to go through disaster to recognize that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. I ask you, O oh God, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Turn the hearts of mankind to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Cause a mighty move of your spirit to deliver your people your creation from the influence that Satan has gone has cut, put over them in the name of Jesus Christ the influence of money the influence of power the influence of witchcraft the influence of principalities and powers rulers of darkness father let your light so shine that we may see and walk in a different path for your glory and for your name's sake. Have thine own way, O God. Deliver us and we will be delivered. Father, this morning I speak even now by your authority. I speak even now to the spirit of disappointment, to the spirit of failure, to the spirit of rejection, to the spirit of fear, to the spirit of compromise. We compromise, oh God, we say, okay, since God has not fixed this, since God is not seemingly, that since God doesn't care about this particular issue that I'm going through, I'm going to just leave it and just be comfortable that God wants me to stay with this. So many of us have become comfortable with an with a, with a ailment, with something that goes against God's word. We have accepted a bad relationship, an abusive relationship, a cheating relationship because we said, God, I made this decision. I'm in it already. And so if you have not changed it, I've prayed for years and nothing has happened. Maybe you're saying this is my punishment for marrying this person. That's not how God punishes us. It is not that will. That's not how God operates. He's a God of love. And so we're missing something somewhere. And that's what we're asking God to reveal to us. Each of us individually have to ask God personally. Come on, this morning, today, in order to be delivered, you must know the right word to say. You must know what to ask so that you can release, that you can push the gate. Remember when Paul uh, was in prison, an earthquake was what he needed to deliver him. To shake up the place so that others around could see the might and power of God. But when Peter was to be delivered, no one saw. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? It says that every individual situation, every individual situation in every individual's life gets an individual attention from God. God is not going to use an earthquake where an angel is supposed to come and let you out. God is not going to use an angel to come let you out when there's an earthquake that needs to shake what is around you. God is not going to let the lions fall dead when it's a better testimony for them to just be there and not be able to eat you. God is not going to let the fire burn you and then bring you back to health. When it's a better testimony to have you stand in the midst of a fiery furnace and nothing happens to you. God uses different situations for each person. And so I'm saying to you this morning, if you have felt disappointed, if you have felt hurt, if you have felt like God has abandoned you or forsake you about something that is inside of you, something that you've been carrying for a long time, hallelujah something that you've been beseeching God for more than 21 days concerning and you're not seeing the answer I'm saying to you this morning say Lord Jesus deliver me deliver me Lord make haste to deliver me like you did for David in Psalm 70 make haste O God to deliver me you have to ask him yourself because it is your personal request that he will come true on I am asking you this morning Lord Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if I be your son, and I know I am, 
I am asking you, Lord, bring clarity, bring positioning, bring deliverance to the things that ail my inside, to the things that have caused the spirit of rejection and disappointment and hurt and distress and stress and pain to have taken root on my inside. Deliver me this morning. Deliver your people this morning, O oh God. Deliver us because we are your vessels. And if our inside is not fully clean and sanctified and purified, then what is coming out of us, though it may be good, still has an element of contamination. It still has an element of fear and doubt and unbelief. It is still contaminated. So Lord, deliver us today. Deliver us, O oh God, from everything that is in us. And it doesn't mean that you have to. We're not asking you to fix everything. Because some things we have to carry, like Paul carried the thorn in his side. Some things we will have to carry. And we are we, we're completely fine with that. I speak on behalf of every person hearing my voice this morning. God, if you say you have to carry this. We are willing to carry it. We're willing to carry it. You told Paul, my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You can say the same thing to us, O oh God, and we will accept it and walk with you. We're walking with you now, but we don't know why. And so there is murmuring and complaining in some of us. There is disappointment and hurt in some of us. There is a feeling of rejection and abandonment in some of us. And so we place them before you this morning, O oh God. We place all of these issues on the, at the foot of the cross, on the altar, and we say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, visit us. Visit us by your word, your will, or your purpose. Visit us, O oh Lord and bring direction and correction to our lives that we might truly be anointed sons that you can trust, that we might truly walk in the fullness of your wisdom and understanding, your counsel and might, your knowledge and the fear of the Lord, that we might truly be a representation of your fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of, of the Spirit to your glory to your honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ father I come against the spirit of untimely death I come against the spirit of untimely death I declare that none of no fourth watch family member no member of the Christian community shall fall victim to the sinister plot of the enemy to reduce the population of the world I declare that we shall not die but live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare that every contamination in the blood of any child of God, those hearing my voice and those connected to them, God Almighty, any plot, scheme or trap to contaminate and to cause delayed reactions that will lead to heart attack or any other disease, I reverse that curse, I uproot that, 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 that virus, that time release capsule in their bloodstreams in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I uproot and deliver you from anything that was meant to kill you, anything that was meant to destabilize you, anything that was meant to cause you to be uh, 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 infertile in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel that assignment against you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare you delivered from anything that Satan has fed you in your sleep fed you through your, 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 your two tablets, through medications, fed you through injections. I uproot that by fire. I uproot that by fire. I uproot that by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every negative side effect of anything that is in your system from food, from medication, from vaccines, I uproot it by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare that any plot that ha has been hatched in the spirit or by man to destroy your lives, I declare that you shall live and not die. You shall declare the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall stand in authority and power. You shall live to declare the works of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
I declare that what the enemy meant for evil, you will experience for good. You will walk in the joy of the Lord in this season and in the seasons to come. I declare your generation and your descendants from your generation shall live and not die. When all others fail and all have fallen victim to the works of Satan, we will overcome. We will be like the children of Israel going across the Red Sea. We will be like the children of Israel going across the Jordan. We will be like the children of Israel circling the Jericho Wall. We will be like the children of Israel taking Ai, taking Canaan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We will not die. We will overcome. We will walk in our victory. We will live to declare the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that our Canaan shall not miss us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Father, everyone under the sound of my voice i pray even now that you will deliver us from the spirit of disappointment every spirit of disappointment every spirit of disappointment i command you now loose loose uproot uproot every spirit of disappointment every foul unclean spirit of disappointment every spirit of compromise every spirit that have, that that started out as fear but have taken root in and, and have made excuses and have taken root in the lives of god's people i uproot you now this 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 uh this is what i have to live with because this is what god has done uh he's he's wise in his own eyes naked i came into this world and naked i will go out blessed be the name of the lord what God is doing to me I will accept it as my fate accomplice I reverse that curse and I declare that anything that Satan has instituted in your life today it ends I speak deliverance to you now I speak deliverance to you now I speak deliverance to you now I uproot everything that is in your joint and marrow I uproot everything in your intestine I uproot everything in your womb everything in your prostate everything that is not according to the will and purpose of the Lord Lord Jesus Christ I uproot it by fire I uproot it by fire and I declare that the desires of God for you and your desires for God's blessing must come to pass now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I break every curse I release you from every prison I send earthquake to your circumstances I send angels to your circumstances to release you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I send a fire of the living God to your circumstances right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I declare you are delivered you are set free and you are made whole in Jesus mighty and matchless name hallelujah 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 to our King hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Victory belongs to the children of God. Victory is our portion. Victory, hallelujah, was sealed when Jesus Christ of Nazareth rose from the dead on the third day. Victory was sealed. Hallelujah. The reason Jesus stayed for 40 or 50 days after he rose from the dead, mingling and mixing and making sure that enough people saw him, to confirm that he had victory over hell, death, and the grave. That everything that would easily beset us from birth to death, that he had victory over it. And it is in his victory that we are victorious. It is by his stripes that we are healed. It is by his name that is above every name that we stand and are victorious. And so, Lord Jesus, we place everything that we are before you this morning. And we say, Lord, let none, let none, let none that are hearing my voice leave the same way they came. Let every burden be lifted, every yoke be destroyed. And let your burden that is light and your yoke that is easy be placed upon us. That we might truly run at maximum speed and never get weary. Walk for miles and miles and never faint. May we walk in the fullness of your victory. May this day be the day we cross into Canaan and take possession of what truly is rightfully ours. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Amen. And amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just want to read a few um, prayer points from uh, just about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so prayer points from the prayer reign concerning um, concerning us today and deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So get 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 ready get ready i'm just gonna declare a few prayer points from the prayer rain hallelujah father in the mighty name of jesus christ i ask you to let every organ in our bodies become too hot for any evil to inhabit in the name of jesus father i pray in the mighty name of jesus christ let every organ in our body begin to feel the heat of god begin to feel the heat of god the fire of god every organ in our body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let every organ in our body begin to feel the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. Any organ in our bodies that have been damaged, that are on the way to being damaged, our liver, our kidney, our spleen, our heart, our lungs. Father, every organ in our body, Father, you know them. I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let our organs be too hot for the work of the enemy. Father, anything that has already happened to cause any kind of renal failure, any kidney failure, any heart failure, any 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 lung disease. Father, we ask that you will reverse them by fire, by fire, by fire. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let our organs be too hot for the enemy's plots and schemes and traps to manifest. I command every sickness, every infirmity in the organs of everyone hearing my voice now. I command you, you foul, unclean spirit of infirmity. Come out of the organs of God's people now. Uproot and go. Uproot and go. Go. uproot and go come on come on come on take a deep breath and cause that breath of fire that is going in i release the fire fire of god fire of god fire of the living god fire of the holy one of israel i release that fire breathe that fire in and let it go down into your system and cleanse every organ in your body come on by faith receive that fire receive that fire and let it cleanse every organ in your body and then let it back out let it back out in the mighty name of jesus christ every damage to any organ in my body i command you uproot by fire uproot by fire uproot by fire every damage to my organs i command a reversal i command a transformation in the name of jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, people of God. We got to get healthy. We got to get healthy in spirit on our inside and healthy in the natural. Every damage to any organ in our bodies. Come on. Now, every infirmity in our organs, loose now by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, prime them up, prime them up, prime them up. Your organs must be as healthy as when you were born, healthy as when you were a young person. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every contamination in your organs, in your body, I command them now, loose and come out you infirmity come out of our organs now in jesus christ of nazareth's name hallelujah 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 what a mighty god hallelujah every evil growth in our lives hallelujah be uprooted by fire every evil growth anything that is growing in our lives fear doubt unforgiveness unbelief rejection pain sorrow disappointments every evil hallelujah growth in our lives everything that is evil that is growing in our lives whether by our own interactions or by the interactions of demonic forces mermaid spirits uh, familiar spirits marine spirits of any kind anything that is growing that is evil in our lives i command you now be uprooted in the name of jesus christ the word of god says we have power i have power my people have power to tread upon serpent and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and therefore any evil growth that is in our lives this morning we serve you notice you must up and out come out 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 any evil thing growing in our lives whether in our minds in our soul or in our spirit in our bodies i command every evil growth operating functioning 
growing in our lives be uprooted now uprooted now at the sound of my voice you must uproot you must obey and come up and out out now every evil growth in the lives of God's people hearing my voice I command you in the name of Jesus Christ do not resist come out now in the name of Jesus Christ come on people of God everything I say as I say it take a deep breath and release so that it can go from your life that you might live free in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Next one. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let our bodies reject every evil habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, hallelujah. Let our bodies reject evil habitation, whether from medication, from vaccines, from food, from, from, from oxygen, from contaminated air, anything that has entered our systems, O oh God Almighty, and wants to have an evil habitation in our system, in our bloodstream, even in our very DNA, we uproot it. Let our bodies reject it now. I command your body to reject every evil habitation in the name of Jesus Christ. Uproot and go. Uproot and go. I command you, loose. God's people right now. I'm not asking you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every evil habitation in the bloodstream, in the joints and marrow, in the organs, in the mind, in the soul of God's people. As you hear my voice, I command you to dislodge. Dislodge, you serpent. Dislodge. You will not have any babies or any eggs left in God's people's bodies. Up and out. Up and out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Loose them now. Come on. Deep breath and blow out. Deep breath and out. Deep breath and out. Any evil inhabitant that is in your body or in your soul must go right now. Right now. Out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, by, by your power by your authority controlled by your angels and the holy spirit i speak an expelling of any satanic deposit in the intestines of your people in the womb of your women in the intestines of your people i command every satanic deposit every deposit that has happened from sexual transfer sexual uh, connection in the dreams or sexual connection in the natural every satanic deposit from food in our intestines or in the wombs or in the in the in in the prostate of the man, I command every satanic deposit to be uprooted now. Come on, people of God. Come on, come on, come on. Deep breath and breathe out. Say, Lord, free me from every satanic deposit. Lord, free me from every satanic deposit now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, come on. It matters not where you are. Hallelujah. If you have to stop when you're driving and spit out whatever it is that's coming up, do it. You're being free. You're being made whole. You're being set free now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be free, be free, be free. Every satanic deposit in your body through medication, through food, through oxygen, anything at all that is contaminating your system uh, as a satanic deposit, I command it to come out of your intestine, come out of your blood, come out of your lungs, come out of your ears, come out of your eyes, come out of your sinuses, come out of your brain right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uproot and go. Come on, people of God. Prime that disgusting satanic deposit out of your system by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear is a satanic deposit. Pride is a satanic deposit. Lust is a satanic deposit. Masturbation is a satanic deposit. Come on. Pornography is a satanic deposit. Come on. Hallelujah. Every form of sexual immorality, every form of bad food, bad drink, everything that contaminates your intestine, contaminates your soul, contaminates your womb, contaminates contaminates your prostate hallelujah everything that contaminates your brain contaminates your bloodstream is a satanic deposit and every satanic deposit we serve you notice this morning loose God's people come on prime and command him to loose you loose you loose you loose you tell him to loose you and go <sighs> In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on. Some of you are getting delivered in a big way. In a big way. In a big way. Come on. Allow it. Allow God to move upon you. You ask God the question this morning and he's answering. He's delivering you. He's delivering you. He's delivering you. Don't be ashamed. Receive your deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I expel every satanic deposit in the reproductive organs of your people, in the womb, in the in the in in, in where the, the, the eggs are for the woman and the sperm is for the man. I cancel every satanic deposit in our reproductive systems in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare no more miscarriage, no more can't get pregnant, no more bad eggs, hallelujah, and no more bad sperm, no more hallelujah. A erectile dysfunction. I cancel every satanic deposit that has caused my, uh, mighty men and women of God to not be able to produce righteous seed. I reverse that curse and destroy it. Come on, if you've been trying to have a baby with your spouse and it has not been happening, woman, you 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 were told that your eggs are good, uh, but your husband just can't seem to hit. This morning, I declare that demon, that demonic deposit, that satanic deposit that is blocking the sperm from get to the egg uproot now in the name of jesus come on believe god believe god believe god believe god your ox and god is answering today believe god come on <sighs> Out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every watery sperm, every low sperm count be destroyed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every egg that is not being fertilized, I speak fertilized by the Holy Ghost to your eggs now in the name of Jesus. I speak blessings to your fallopian tube. I speak grace to your uterus in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are to have a child for the kingdom of God, I declare you pregnant now with the beauty of a prophet and a prophetess in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every satanic deposit in your reproductive organs, I command it to uproot now and every residue, every residue, every residue in your reproductive system, I command it to be destroyed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that your reproductive system is now perfect and ready to go to work and produce the glory of God in Jesus' name. Last one, I expel any satanic deposit in your womb in the name of Jesus Christ, in your spiritual womb and in your natural womb. I expel every satanic deposit in your spiritual womb and in your natural womb. And I declare that this year, 2023, you will give birth to God's glory. You will give birth to God's purpose. You will give birth to God's idea. You will give birth to God's ministry. You will give birth to God's favor. You will give birth to God's glory, Shekinah glory and testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who, who may have experienced great levels of deliverance, hallelujah, please let us know so that we can um, send you some information about how to keep your deliverance and we can just uh, seal with, with personal prayer. So reach out to us so that we can um, reach to you and, 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 and pray with you. Pastor Mash and I are, um, will make the effort to just pray with you and seal and get your email address and just send you how to keep your deliverance so that you can continue to walk in freedom. Amen. Anything that you were delivered from today, hallelujah. And some of you will know, some will have just mild deliverance, you'll just feel lighter, but some would have had some aggressive things come from you, which means Satan has been depositing and trying to kill you for a excuse me, I'm so sorry, and trying to destroy you for a long time. And God in his wisdom, God in his love, God in his mercy has come true for you today. If you are one of those and you have experienced that, please do not be afraid or ashamed to reach out to us. We're family. We love you. We love you, love you so much. Reach out to us and we will pray with you to seal your, your position and also to send you a copy of the How to Keep Your Deliverance so that you can walk in the freedom that the, 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 the Son of God died to get you. Amen. Hallelujah. Marsha Gillespie says, from you been praying, I just keep yawning. That's deliverance. That's full deliverance. Hallelujah. Marsha Gillespie, please reach out to us by messenger or WhatsApp. If you have the contact, the contacts are also on the page, on the, um, the Facebook page. Hallelujah. So please reach out. We want to make sure that you are fully in position to go do what God has called you to do. Amen. No shame. We are family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's not like you have experienced anywhere else. You don't have to be hesitant or whatever. God has put you in this family for a reason. 
and he's put you in this family because he knows this is an authentic representation of his love for his people amen praise god hallelujah hallelujah we're out of time glory to god we're out of time but i believe that god has done a marvelous work this morning and we give him all praise all honor and all glory hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord jesus uh please get your communion and let's seal the deliverance let's seal what god has done with his body and his blood hallelujah father we thank you this morning for <clears throat> excuse me all that you have done thank you for deliverance thank you for healing thank you for lifting the burdens of this world and the yoke of this world and giving us your burden and your yoke from your world let your kingdom come and your will be done in us and through us as it is in heaven in the name of the lord jesus christ father we ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now may they be to our bodies health and strength prosperity and good success life and life more abundantly in jesus mighty name amen and amen and so as the lord jesus christ took the bread he blessed it and broke it he gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. That's good, Sister Natalie. If you don't already have the how to keep your deliverance please let me know and i will send it to you pastor marsha will forward it to you so you can begin to to um to utilize these scriptures to maintain what god has done for you this morning amen hallelujah same thing for you guys on instagram and TikTok. hallelujah hallelujah and so likewise the lord jesus christ took the bread the the, the 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 cup he blessed it and took a sup and he said drink this is my blood the blood of the new covenant as often as you drink of it you do it in remembrance of me drink ye all of it in faith in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for joining us this morning i hope that it was a blessing to you and a blessing to your household to your family i declare that you are blessed and highly favored in the name of jesus christ raise your hands for the blessing and now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of jesus christ go forth and have an amazing day god's way for our god has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way in jesus name remember jesus love you and we love the whole owner of too on behalf of pastor marsha wade i'm ron wade saying be blessed man you are loved you are god's treasure you are a trophy on his mantle and he desires to walk with you wherever you go in jesus name god bless you have a wonderful day it is well bless hallelujah marsha gillespie please remember to reach out for your how to keep your deliverance